Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom, sponsored by the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. And today, we're going to be looking at, we've been doing a lot of trade stuff. I'm going to switch it up a little bit. I saw a great article that talks about every team's free agent signings in the offseason, most difficult free agent signings in the offseason. Now, I saw the article. I like the idea. I haven't read it at all. This is going to be pure reaction. I put all the teams up in my uh, browser so I can just go over to it. If you're looking for an edited uh, quote, quote, professional, this ain't it, man. <laughs> this is reaction, one take, and that's the way I work. One take and I go. If you're looking for great content that's a lot of fun, though, you, you, I think you might want to stick around. So, sub yourself up. I do this content all the time. We're going to look at it, and I'll be as surprised as you, and we'll talk about how much each player may make, whether they're going to... The team's going to sign them, not sign them, should they sign them, all that kind of fun stuff like that. Come sub yourself up so you can be part of the NHL Pearl of Wisdom show that I do when I feel like it. And I also do live streams with a fellow named Peyton on the radio and off the wall hockey. So sub up, get part of the fun. Let's go look at it, shall we? Boom. Okay. Every team's toughest free agent decision. This is uh, restricted and uh, restricted and uh, UFA, either one. So this is from Franklin Steele. It's off of Bleacher Report, actually. I haven't did something off of Bleacher Report for quite some time. As you can see, it looks like we know maybe which one Pittsburgh is, but Let's look at everyone, every team, and then I'm just going to go see off the top of my head, pure reaction, how much they might sign them for, how much they may not sign them for, all of those sort of things like that. Starting off with the Anaheim Ducks and Sonny Milano. And uh, it's, see, it's, it's Sonny Milano is a very difficult one because this has really been his first decent year. Uh, he's only 25 years old, as it says in the article, um, but he, ha he hasn't made all that much of an impact up until now, uh, as it says here as well. Um, two, it, with his last two, he was in the AHL last year, actually. Um, it came up and found some chemistry with Zegras, and now he's a restricted free agent. When he was with uh, Columbus, I remember... Uh, Tortorella really being frustrated with him. Seemed like there was a maturity thing going on there. So, okay, let's look at Sonny Milano. Okay, now, when they first brought him up from the AHL this year, which was early on in the season, he was right there with uh, Trevor Zegers, on the line with Trevor Zegers. If you remember that Trevor Zegers did a little flip pass, by the way, Anaheim fans, if you like this type of content, I do this all the time, sub yourself up. He did the little flip over the net, and the guy who knocked it in knocked it in was Sonny Milano. They were just flying earlier early on in the season. But now, as you can tell, he had a little bit of an injury issue, came back, and they got him on the fourth line with Isaac Lundestrom and Gerald Mayhew. Um, now, there could be a lot of reasons for that, but it would be odd that they wouldn't put him back up with Trevor Zegers. Uh, playing with Isaac Lundestrom, I know one thing, reason why they may do something like that is Isaac Lundestrom is a fantastic defensive player. And my in inclination here is that uh, the coach, Dallas Eakins, would be kind of like encouraging him to watch Mr. Lindstrom because we need you to play a little better defensively. And i uh, sure Tortorella in Columbus talked about that a lot. Also, he's, uh, he, you know, conditioning has been an issue, all of that sort of stuff. So let's look at his contract. 1.7 million. 
Uh, he's 25 years old, so he's a restricted free agent, and he made 1.7. They need to give him at least a qualifying offer, which would put it around two million to start off with. Now, that's all they have to do. They can give him a one-year deal here, and he's a restricted free agent next year. And honestly, when we look at his stats, let's see, as you can see, he was in Columbus. He had 18 points, uh, 22 points a year before that. He, he looks, if you watch him, he looks like he's got all the skill that you would want in a player. But I think conditioning and uh, possibly maturity and defensive play has really held this kid back. This has been his best year, career year, 31 points in 58 games. Not bad, but not spectacular. I don't worry about the minus 10. I'm not a, I'm not, I'm more of an analytics guy than I am plus minus guy, but whatever. If you take that into consideration. But 31 points in 58 games is okay. My thinking here, and you can tell me if you feel this way, is that they're just going to give him a one year. They're going to give him a one year deal. Now the other, uh, and that's, and I think that's probably what Milano will be looking forward to. He's going to want to prove that he can improve like he did this year, next year, and then go for a bigger contract after that. Otherwise, I'm probably not paying much more than two, two point five for a couple more years. And and Sonny Milano, if he believes in himself, would probably be selling himself short to sign that contract. So my thinking is. Anaheim's just going to give him a qualifying offer, stick to the one year. He'll be 26. I do believe that he's going to be able to go to arbitration after that. And, you know, things could get dicey then. But if he has a really good year, Anaheim does have cap space. So they probably would sign him up. It's not a very, it's not one of the more difficult signings, but I think that's what's going to happen. Okay, next. Arizona, Lawson Krause. This is a very interesting one because Arizona is going to a 5,000-seat arena next year. I'm not sure if you're aware of that. Um, and they really have a, you know, it's going to be tough for them to give a lot of money to anybody. But Kraus is the toughest player they have. Um, he's He put up some really decent points this year that he may not have been able to put up on another roster. He probably wouldn't have played that high up in the lineup. Uh, however, he's been a good soldier. And I'm pretty sure that they're interested in He's He's got a lot of speed for his, uh, for his size. So we'll look at it. Well, let's take a look at him. He, I think he's injured right now. Yeah, he's on the injury reserve right now. And he's 24 years old, um, 1.53 million. And I get good. Arizona doesn't have to worry about cap space, but they do because they're going to be on in the cap floor. He's making 1.5 million this year. He's 24 years old. This screams bridge deal up until he's a free agent. I think that's what's going to happen here. Um, hard to put a number on a guy who had 34 points in 65 games, but has never had more than 13. Well, I guess he had 25 points, 25 points in 66 in 2020 as well. He's definitely more than 1.5 million. That's for sure. Um, I would say he's a restricted free agent, so I, I doubt he's asking for a trade. I've heard that he really loves it there. He is big. He has speed. He can be an offensive player for Arizona. I think you're looking at about three, two point seven three million for a couple of years right now, and I, I think Lawson Cross would be okay with that. Just double his salary right now. It puts him in a price range of like the ten of the world and stuff like that, and that's probably not far off from what he is. Um, also, if he was on another team especially a really deep team, he might not even get that. Like, he may not get the – not have got the – when you got guys like Patrick Maroon in Tampa Bay and making a million 
you know, and if he was in Tampa Bay, that's probably like where he would be about that fourth line guy, something of that nature. Like that's a really deep team. I think Kraus can play third line fine and all of that, but on a really deep team, he might be buried on the fourth and not be able to get this three million marker. Maybe even two and a half, you might be able to get away with Lawson Kraus. So um, for him, I think he would be happy with that. And so I don't think it's that difficult of a signing, but I get it. It's hard to value him because he's. it's probably his point production is probably higher than it would be on a super deep team. So I, I three and three million tops, maybe 2.5, somewhere in that area is what I would say. What do you think, Arizona fans? By the way, sub yourself up because I do this content all the time and you're going to want to be part of it, right? Right, right. Okay, next, what do we got? Oh, Patrice Bergeron in Boston, of course. That is going to be a difficult one. Uh, he's 35 years old, I believe, or 36. Of course, he's a legend in Boston. Uh, we'll take a look at his point, but he's 36. So he's also a favorite. He's still a Selkie favorite. His current cap hit is $6.8 million. Uh, which means he's due for a pretty significant raise. It could be. It could be a raise. Um, he's a Selkie Trophy candidate, 60, 70 point guy, leader. Uh, I mean, there's Hayes in Philadelphia is getting seven, seven and a half right now, and he signed that a while ago. If he even signed for seven and a half, that'd probably be, be fair value for him. Uh, the problem is Boston is completely capped out. So really, this is going to be a give-and-take contract, I think. It's going to come down to, I mean, we haven't looked at salary cap, but we'll look at salary cap for Boston here. Four million is all they have right now for next year with him to sign uh, with Bergeron to sign, and, you know, a couple guys like Lazar and all that. There, so there's going to have to be some bodies moved out here. And Bergeron, you'd have to think, maybe he'll just go like, you know what? I made enough money. I'll just keep the same contract. Uh, here he's going to sign one-year deals. So from now on. If he's going to sign one-year deals, then, you know, who knows, seven and a half? Seven and a half to eight would actually be what his value is, even at 36 years old on a one-year deal. He's still a Selkie guy. Uh, we'll take a look at him as far as points this year and everything is concerned. He doesn't really get injured all that much. Like, that's the thing. He's so consistent. And I think the big thing for him, though, that this contract, he probably he gave a little bit already. Like He gave up a little bit. He could have been making a lot more than now right now. So if he looked at it from a – nobody would blame Bergeron if he said, okay, I want to get paid this time even, you know, more. My value this time. I wouldn't blame him necessarily. But 55 points in 64 games, uh, you know, if you pro – that's like what 65 25 on an 82 game schedule if he's able to play a full season that his numbers haven't fallen off all that much man the guy's still crushing it and he's still a selkie trophy candidate so if he wanted to ask for seven to seven and a half it'd be kind of hard to argue this is a very difficult thing what do you think boston fans sub yourself up let me know or in the comment section, what you think he's going to sign for, or what he should sign for, or, you know, because this one is really tough. I think if he wants to, he can do seven and a half easy. If Krejci was still in there, he'd be making that, right? But if they do pay him seven and a half, I mean, there's more guys that got to go. So it's up to him. Do you want to have more players? To win a cup is what's your motivation? What's Bergie? What's Bergie's motivation here? I get a feeling he's going to sign something that's going to be like, "Whoa, dude, 
you really want to win a cup. I have a feeling that that it's going to be a number that is well below his value. What do you guys think, Boston fans, or anybody else out there? Okay, next. We got Boston, Buffalo, Victor Olofsson. Um, this is a tough one. I don't think they're going to offer too much. Olofsson, his output this season has ahead of the trade. Olofsson has hung around as one of the teams. He's a great shooter. But he's not very good defensively. He's not a good two-way guy. Um, I think he can fit somewhere, but it really is going to depend on how much he's asked. And like, if he's asking for oh, I missed Buffalo. Oh, there we are, Buffalo. Uh, if he like if he, on the open market. He's making three, and he's a restricted free agent. So they, they got to give him a qualifying offer, which will bring him to free agency. Uh, Buffalo doesn't really need to worry about – I'm not even going to look at their cap space because they don't really need to worry about cap space. They're in the bottom of the league at cap space. It's possible that they trade him to someone and get like a middle pick. He really has fallen off as of late. Like, look at his numbers. For a guy who isn't the greatest defensively, he doesn't put up numbers that knock you out. Like 18, 20 goal score, 20 some goal score, 39 assists. But it, it's just if you watch him play, it's pretty mad. Like, he doesn't do all the little things you want from a player. Of his stature, um, I think they're either going to sign him, going to give him the one year, bring him back for another year because they do need goal scoring anyways. So they'll give him a qualifying offer, and then you know maybe see what he can do with that qualifying offer. And they can, if if he changes it around a little bit because he's still a young guy, if he starts to play with a little more desire, that's the word I'm looking for, uh, a little less perimeter. His shot is amazing when you consider he's pretty much a perimeter guy and he can still pot 18 goals. Um, on the open market, I wouldn't be surprised if he pulls four and a half. Somebody will do it. Like some team that has a lot of good defensive players, like say the Islanders, but need that one-shot shooter, I could see them ponying up a little bit for him. But for Buffalo right now, do, do they want to – they got Quinn coming in. They got a lot of young guys coming up. I don't think they want to block them. This is a tough spot. I think they either trade him at the draft for as high a pick as they can pick as they can get to some team that maybe thinks they can get more out of him uh, and has some cap space, or they give him a one-year uh, qualifying offer and he hands out to free agency next year if he doesn't have a better year. Or they trade him at the deadline. That's what I think they do. So, but, but Sabres fans, what do you think of, uh, of uh, Mr. Olofsson? What, how much should they sign him for? Do you agree with me? Should they keep him? Uh, next. Oh, why am I going here? I want to go here, probably. Johnny Goudreau. I mean, I'm not even going to go too far into this. Johnny Goudreau is getting $10 million plus. $10 million at least. If he gets... If he gets less than 10, Calgary's doing really well. Uh, um, I would say, like, just look at his numbers, man. Look at his numbers. Johnny Goudreau, top line left winger, putting up just sick numbers again. Uh, he was 6.75. You know, that's a pretty sweetheart deal already. He's been on a sweetheart deal for a while. He's going to be over 100. He's got 10 more games to go. He's going to be over 100 points. There's only been a couple players in the league right now that have done that, like Marner, Panarin, Huberto. Huberto will get paid, or already did. can't remember. Anyways, those guys are making 11.5. And he almost hit 100 a couple of years ago as well. Had a bit of a dip in production where all of Calgary 
all of the Calgary uh, players really did. The whole team had a different production. But he's gone off again. I mean, unless he really does a hometown discount, he's getting 10. And Calgary's doing it. Like, and what I heard actually is that the deal is done. They, it's actually, it was actually said publicly. Uh, I on serious radio. I couldn't remember. I can't remember now who was the spokesperson that was talking. It was an ex player, and he, anyways, he has the inside information. He said the deal's done. It's, don't worry about it. He's going to be signed, and uh, I think that's ten million dollars a year, my friends. So how is that going to be for Calgary? It's they're going to start getting like you got ten million plus you got Chuck. I think they have twenty-seven million to work with this year, if I remember. Yeah, twenty-seven million. That's going to get dicey because because Kachuk's got to get a qualifying offer at least. They're going to sign him long term. I'm sure of it. Probably nine million. That leaves you seven million to fill out your roster. But you just you got to do what you got to do, man. No way you're letting Goudreau go, right, Calgary fans? You think he's getting ten? Sub yourself up so you can be part of this contract this uh, content and tell me all this and give me all this in comments and listen to this all the time. I'll be doing stuff like this all the time, but I think he's getting 10 million. Next, we got Carolina, Tony D'Angelo, the man making a million dollars a year after a little bit of a fiasco in New York. And uh, when they did, when that all happened, I, uh, I I thought it was probably overblown. Obviously, Carolina did too. They had a lot of guys who played for the Rangers there. Um, and obviously, they would have asked for them fast and are fast, fast or fast, however you want to say it. Um, Shea, Brady Shea, Stefan. I'm sure they talked to all of them. They said, you know, whatever. They obviously thought he was going to be okay. But he signed a million dollars a year contract, and now he's got to get another contract again. And yeah, I would say this is one hell of a difficult contract to decide how much to give the guy. Because Carolina is pretty good. Yeah, they got $20 million in cap space. Uh, they're pro uh, from what I understand, they're not signing Vinny Trocek, but they're going to have to fill that center spot somehow. Uh, I don't know what they're going to do with Max Domi. But it looks like they have the room to give him a, a good raise. And, and I, from all I've heard, they're pretty happy with him. He's 26 years old. He's a restricted free agent. But the thing is, is what is D'Angelo, where is his motivation going to be? Because, first of all, they gave him a chance when not too many people were willing to give him a chance after... He left Arizona, had issues there. Montreal seemed to have, was it Arizona to Montreal, I believe? And then New York, oh, sorry, no, it was Arizona to the New York Rangers and then had that big kerfuffle with the goaltender there, Georgiev or whatever. I don't know exactly what it all was, but it was enough for them basically to nix his contract. You know, not really nix his contract, but buy him out, let him go, get rid of him. Just like, you're never playing here again. And Carolina did him a solid, gave him a million dollars uh, contract. So what, does he appreciate that from them? Is this kind of like, a, hey, you know what, guys? Uh, I really appreciate what you did because he pulled 47 points in 55 games so far this year. He's had 53 uh, the year before last. And it seems to be like he's trending in the area of about a 60, 70 point defenseman. Not spectacular defensively, but he's been really good this year, apparently, from what I hear in Carolina. Like a lot better defensively. And I don't worry about the plus minus. That doesn't mean much to me. But analytically speaking, he's not too bad. Like he's not great, but he's not bad. It's certainly good enough for the offense that he puts up there. Um, somebody that they had just left. Got $9 million in New Jersey and Hamilton. This point production for a defenseman, I mean, you got Barry, then we got 
for, and he was the highest point producer last year. He's terrible defensively, though. Maybe they can get him for five or six million dollars a year in a long-term contract. Uh, I mean, I don't know if I would sign that if I were him. I'd really, 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 really like to have, like Carolina if I was going to do that. It's possible he might say, you know, let's do a short-term deal, but they're like, nah, man, you're going to go to free agency. We don't want to give you a short-term deal and then you bail on us in free agency. You know, we, we, we signed you up here. We gave you a chance. Come on, let's do us a solid here. I say, it, it, this is really tough. I, let's see what the article says about this. Yeah, it's almost a foregone conclusion that he'll hit the market. So the Rangers bought out his contract. He's on pace for more than 50 points this year. However, a defenseman like that can get paid if they want to. Yes. I think, basically, I think they're going to offer him $6 million for a longer-term contract, and it's up to him if he wants to sign it or not. This is going to be very difficult. Uh, they wanted, I remember them wanting to sign Hamilton to about that six or seven million or something like that. And they were willing to go nine. I think Hamilton is better defensively. And I know Carolina fans are like, he wasn't good defensively. Analytically, he's a, possess, he's a possession driver. Uh, defense isn't all just blocking shots. Defense is spending more time in the offensive zone and the defensive zone a lot. And Hamilton did a lot of that. Uh, maybe they can get away with six, six and a half. I think it's going to be a tough decision for them. What do you think, Carolina fans? Sub yourself up. I want to know what you think. What should he sign for? How much, how long? What's the term? All of those sort of things like that. If I could get him for six and he's willing to sign for eight years, I'm doing it tomorrow myself. I would definitely do that tomorrow. Okay, next. Chicago Blackhawks, Dylan Strom. Right, okay. Um, Dylan Strom is a very difficult one to sign because he really hasn't had a great year. He's very poor defensively. Uh, his skating has been an issue. He was in Jeremy Coolitton's doghouse when he was there, and I can understand why, because he misses assignments all over the ice. But his offense is great. He's, he's, he's very good offensively. So what do you sign a guy like that for? Uh, personally, for me, I mean, let's look at his numbers. We'll take a look at his numbers. you got to remember, Chicago's tapped out too. And apparently, they're not trading Kane or Taze. I don't think that's because they don't want to as much as they, you know, ironclad and all movement clauses are not going anywhere. They have $22 million in cap space with Kubelik, who I hear, again, uh, there, there was rumblings of trading him. Kirby Dock is going to get paid a little bit for sure at 21. He was, he's probably going to get three to three and a half million. But nobody really huge to sign here. It's just a question of whether the, how much they like him. And how much does he is does he want to get? He's twenty six now, and and he put up the best numbers of his career. Forty three points in fifty nine games, not bad. Though he had fifty one points in fifty eight for Chicago one year as well. Again, he's not great defensively. Does the new management like him? I wonder if he'd take $5 million for another five years or seven years or something like that. That's kind of what I think the offer is going to be for Chicago. I wonder what Strom is going to take on that. He goes on the open market. If he, like next year, if they just give him, a, if they can't get a number for a long term contract and they just sign him to a, uh, qualifying offer 
he goes on the open market, he, for him, he might gamble on himself, put up another 60, 70 point season, and some general manager might go off on him. But, hmm. Honestly, for, for me, I don't want to invest seven, six, seven years on, on a guy like him. And I haven't seen enough to make me think that he's worth, you know, six million for six or something like that. His defensive side of his game isn't great. This is the first year. It looks like he got committed to what he was doing. I want to see more, but there's not much time to see more because he's going to be, uh, he's 26. It seems like the best road here would be a prove it deal. Yeah, I think so. But then he's going to be a free agent. So then you can make up your mind from then and then you you know, trade him at the deadline. That's probably what's going to happen. Prove it deal, trade him at the deadline. Colorado Avalanche and Nazim Kadri. This is a tough one for Colorado for sure. We'll look at it a little bit. He's having a killer year, like almost a 100-point year on his contract year, and he hasn't even come close to that before. Uh, overpaying him for what he did in 2021 would be a misstep. Yep. So he's got his hands full with numerous negotiations this summer. We'll take a look at that here right now. Uh, and somewhere along the line, they got to figure out what Kadri's, where Kadri's going to fit. I think they're going to have a really difficult time with this contract, honestly. It, it really, it kind of depends on Kadri and what he wants to do with himself. Because just as much as you shouldn't pay a guy on one good year, centers like Kadri are hard to find. And if, you, and if a team doesn't have one, they have a tendency to overpay for him. He made $4.5 million. He's, he's 31 years old already. And uh, Colorado's got to sign, find, find money for Burakovsky if they want to keep him. Uh, Josh Manson again. You know, there, there's a lot of question marks on this roster as to who they're going to sign and who's not, who they're not going to sign. I think... You got McKinnon coming up again after next year. He's going to get paid $11 million, $12 million, something of that nature. Uh, don't you have McCarr coming up here again? No, they signed him already. Uh, Eric Johnson will come off. They're not too bad. He's going to get paid. Nazem Kadri is going to get double the money that he has right now. $8 million, I would say, for that one great year. And you got to tell me, Colorado fans, sub up and comment in my comment section and tell me, are you willing to pay a guy $8 million who, yes, on a, you know, almost 100 point pace now, but he's never done it before. He's never been a point of game player up until now. And we know the issues he had before with his, uh, with his uh, incidents, right? Uh, he's one bad move away from like a long, long suspension. Do you want to give him $8 million? Do you let him go on the open market? What exactly are we going to do with this guy? Uh, I think they got to sign him. I, I, what do you, I, tell me, just let me know. Like, I, I, I think it's $8 million a year. If he goes on the market, he's going to get that probably for longer than he should. It's up. Will Colorado do it or not? I am up in the air on whether they will do that or not. All right. I'm going to finish the rest of these. Again, we have 34 minutes here. We picked up, we did up to Colorado. I'm going to do another video after this, but I'm going to cut her off here. Tell me what you think guys about whether I was on or off or should they sign or should not sign or what have you. 
uh, for the Colorado Avalanche. It's been fun. I'll talk to you later. I'm going to do the rest of these, so get subbed up so I can hear more from you. Talk to you later, guys. Okay, bye.